Hello, 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 and welcome, Esther, Dora, Farsha, Farshad, uh, Audrey, Devon, Katrina, Jessica, Haley, Hadley's back. Hadley just loves hanging out with us. Yeah. Um, Jasper, hello, Jessica. As you are joining two things, switch your uh, chat to everyone. And let us know where you're watching from and when you are applying, as Rachel just commented in the chat. I am Dr. Ryan Gray, your host for today. Uh, Rachel is here. She will say goodbye in one second, but she will help support you and me uh, in the chat as we go through the day. How are you doing, Rachel? I'm wonderful. Uh, like you said, I'll say hello and goodbye. I'll be here. I'm just going to go off screen and let uh, Ryan do his uh, star thing. And I'll uh, be helpful with links and answers to questions. We're going to do volunteering later. We're going to have plenty of time for Q&A. So if I don't answer your question when you type it right away, just wait. It's just probably wait. coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, just wait. Rain from Gainesville. Florida Gator in the house, I'm assuming. Hello. I'm assuming that's how you say Rain, R-A-Y-N. It's a great name. Unless it's just uh, Ryan and you typed it wrong, <laughs> which I'm assuming you get all the time. If that is your name, Rain, uh, which uh, you are you are confirming, um, then then yes, I'm, I'm assuming lots of people are like, um, hey, Ryan, you spelled your name wrong. Um, anyway, welcome, Rain. Go Gators. Uh, who else we got here? Logan from Missouri applying this year. Hello, Mirna from California Bay Area. Awesome. We got Texas in the house, Tampa in the house, applying now. Have an interview tomorrow, Karina. Let's make sure we get you um, get you on when we do a little practice. Um, so let me share my screen. Let's get started to... Um, to help you with your journey um, to the interview process. So, hello, uh, I am Ryan. Um, and today we're going to talk about how to make an impression with your medical school interview without planning answers to every question. Now, Hadley, you were here last night. Uh, I believe it's the same Hadley. Um, so so no giving away the answers as we go through this, because this is literally the same workshop we did last night. Um, so I, I'm guessing for a lot of you, this isn't the first time you've come to a workshop maybe or looked up advice on the medical school interview. So the first thing, the first thing I want to say, if you feel intimidated or anxious, about this process, about the medical school interview specifically for today, that's normal. Most pre-meds feel nervous. Karina, with your interview tomorrow, are you feeling nervous? Are you feeling a little anxious? Uh, Karina, is this your first interview tomorrow? That is that is a question. Is this your first one tomorrow? Yes, it is. All right, we're going to get you super prepared then. All right, so it's normal. It is normal. So it sounds terrifying, right? Being grilled by an interviewer, all these difficult questions, tell me about yourself and why should we accept you and why the school and why medicine? How are you going to add the diversity of the class? This is what it feels like. But it doesn't have to feel that way, right? It doesn't have to feel like you're being grilled. Um, questions about yourself and why you want to be a doctor and questions about those bad grades maybe you got freshman year, even ethical questions about Roe v. Wade or euthanasia or whatever it is. It's totally normal to feel anxious about this process and thinking ahead to the interview. But here's here's the secret, right? This is one of my favorite memes. Here's a secret. If you approach the interview the right way, you're going to be that soft, cuddly little... Is that a golden retriever or a lab? Looks like a lab. I can never tell the two apart. <laughs> um, if you approach the interview the right way, it doesn't have to be stressful. It can be fun, uh, as you'll see here in a minute. Uh, I'll show you a screenshot. That's a golden? Okay, good. I think golden, longer ears, long fur. Look, I I love dogs. I had a Springer Spaniel growing up. Uh, my wife is deathly allergic, so we don't we don't do dogs in our house. <laughs> in our house. Um, before we get started, right? I I want to make sure you understand that today, hopefully after today, um, or maybe you need a second one, like Hadley being here. <laughs> hopefully after today's workshop, you'll understand that the interview is much more approachable 
uh, than you think it is. And it's much more fun. And I know you have this dream of being a physician and I want to help you live that dream. So that's what we're going to do here today. Um, this workshop, my goal for this workshop is to help you fix two issues for you regarding the medical school interview. The first one is what you'll learn. Um, uh, what you'll learn will help decrease your anxiety around the interview. Now, I, I said earlier, right? Anxiety is natural, but it can really be eased with the right perspective and preparation. I, ha I have a couple um, screenshots from students, right? This student sent me uh, a note saying that their the interview advice I gave them helped them feel confident in his interviews and, and when he was accepted to all four uh, of the schools that he interviewed at. This student read my book and felt really comfortable and relaxed and was accepted to some fantastic schools. A lot of what you'll see here are our students just showing that this change in perspective, this change in how they approach their interview made all of the difference, right? Helped calm my nerves and get accepted, the student saying. Uh, again, it can be fun right? The student told me their MMIs were so much fun. And yes, your interview, inter, interview, your interview day, uh, interview day can be fun as well. And I'll teach you how uh, in this workshop today. So second thing, what you'll learn in this workshop will help you truly make an impression. And that is ultimately what we're going for on your interview day, an impression to be memorable, to win advocates, for you on the admissions committee. This person here, right? I had one shot, one interview, and you helped me to tremendously rock it. The admissions dean said it was a unanimous vote and they remembered me well from my interview. This was from a, a non-trad student I had worked with who was accepted after 10 years on the pre-med path. Another message from a student here following the advice, right? I had my first interview today and the interviewer told me I knocked it out of the park. I'll be seeing you uh, next year and, and I'll be seeing you next year. And another student who took an interview course I offered once um, has said, said they got six acceptances without great stats. All right, so um, we'll continue here. I think there's, oh no, I'm frozen. Go. There we go. <laughs> uh, the student, again, advocates coming out of the interview uh, and the pr uh, after the preparation we did together, right? Afterward, my interviewers both told me they would do everything they could to make sure I was accepted. Now that, that is what you want. So to get more specific, my, my goal in this workshop is to show you these two things, why the med school interview is less scary than you think it is, and how to prep for your interview without memorizing all of those scripted answers that you're writing out. So who am I? I'm Ryan Gray. If you don't know me, shame on you. That's okay. I don't take it personally anymore. <laughs> um, in 2012, I started the medical school headquarters in 2000, end of 2019, 2020. Uh, Rachel and I started MAPT. Um, I'm a former Air Force flight surgeon. And with the pre-med years, I get to pick the brains of lots of needs and, and directors of admissions. I can text them if I have questions. Um, and uh, I got to speak at an admission summit in 2019 to a room full of conference, uh, room full of uh, ADCOM members. Um, I also do a lot of, uh, where probably a lot of you have found me, uh, right? I, I record a lot of YouTube videos. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, all of that, those fun places. So helping pre-meds, probably hundreds of thousands of pre-meds at this point through all of the content um, for uh, almost 11 years now, which is crazy. So here, uh, after all of these years, what I've realized is there's one big problem with how most students approach the interview. And this one problem leads to more anxiety and worse performance. You ready to hear what that problem is? You ready to hear it? While I take a sip of water. <laughs> Jessica, me, ready. Um, the problem, the problem is you think you're supposed to sell yourself. Right. It, comment in the chat if you've heard this advice to sell yourself in your application or especially in your interviews. It's very, very, very common advice. But I believe it is poor advice. And I'll explain why in a moment. So 
let me clarify. When I say sell yourself, it can mean all of these different things, right? All of these things you're trying to convince the interviewer about you, all of these things on your agenda you're trying to cram into the conversation. That's what you think you're supposed to do in the interview. But that is not what I think you should do if you want to make an impression and get accepted. I I love talking about Natalie. Natalie is one of the more striking case studies of students I've worked with on interview prep. You can hear her full story in the Prima Deers episode 241. But here's the short version. Before we met, in her second application cycle, her first application cycle, she had bigger issues other than um, uh, other than interview help. Uh, she didn't get any interviews her first application cycle. Her second application cycle, she had six interviews and no acceptances. She felt nervous at any interview. She said one of her interviews started off horribly because she didn't know how to answer the, quote, tell me about yourself question right at the beginning. We did a series of mock interviews together. I gave her feedback and advice, and she used the tips in my interview book as well. I remember her first interview like it was yesterday. It was horrible, the first mock interview we did together, because she did everything that I'm telling you not to do about selling herself and 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 forcing everything into this narrative of why medicine. So after that first mock interview, we did three more together, and she got better and better and better and better. And in her third application cycle, she was accepted to six schools uh, from 10 interviews. She said she felt much more confident and comfortable in the interviews. And in this workshop, I'm going to teach you what I taught her. You ready for that? Would you like six acceptances from 10 interviews? I would love it. I didn't get six acceptances. <laughs> I wish I was around when I needed me. Um, I'm about to share three big secrets with you about the medical school interview. They're not secrets, though, because we talk about them openly all the time. These should help you understand the mindset shift you really need to have. Here's what we're going to cover in the next 45 minutes or so. We're going to have an exercise where I'm going to bring a couple of you on so you can uh, get some live feedback on your answers. And then we're going to have plenty of time for some Q&A. So secret number one, why trying to sell yourself is a mistake. Let's start with this analogy. I love analogies. Hopefully, you love my analogies as well. Uh, if you've heard me talk uh, about the interview before, I like to talk about it like a dance. The interviewer leads, you follow, you have to listen and respond to what they're asking you. It's a back and forth. But when you come into your interview and trying to sell yourself, it's like you're trying to lead, but they're leading and you're stepping all over their feet. They're stepping all over your feet. You're tripping all over the floor. They said, tell me about yourself. And now you're trying to list your whole CV of accomplishments or tell a story about how you're so dedicated and motivated and all that stuff. Instead of connecting and letting them know who you really are, you have an agenda of what you think they want to know. You're not acting like a real, genuine person. It's not natural. It's not enjoyable. And it doesn't work. This is a quote from Dr. Layla Amiri, now the Dean of Admissions, Associate Dean of Admissions at Lerner College of Medicine in Vermont. Uh, when I interviewed her on the pre Years podcast, she was the Director of Admissions at UICON, or Assistant Dean of Admissions. I don't know if that's right. I think she was the Director of Admissions. Anyway, she was at University of Illinois College of Medicine. Um, and she discussed the biggest things that can go wrong on the interview day. And this is what she said, right? The biggest negative comment that I get from interviewers, and I feel this way as well, is, quote, he or she did not give me the opportunity to meet him or her. All right, the student went in thinking, I have to tell you who I think you want me to be. And there's just no connection there, All right? This is the effect you get when you're selling yourself too much. You don't let the interviewer actually meet you. The other problem with this, with selling yourself, is you're blending in with all the other applicants. Why? Because it's what everyone is doing. Right, there's 80 of you here. There were about 160 of, of you last night. And so 
uh, let's round it up to, to 250 people, uh, maybe 300 who will watch the replays and, and be here live. There are 60,000, 70,000 students applying to medical school. And most of them are doing it the way that I'm telling you not to. Right. And so you're, you're lucky to be hanging out here with me today, learning these, these secrets, these, these not so secrets that we talk about, All right? Medical school interviewers are getting bored of all the students coming in and pitching them on why they're motivated, hardworking, smart, et cetera. And it all blends together. Telling yourself just doesn't work. It's boring. One last point before we move on. You don't need to sell yourself. Why don't you need to sell yourself? Well, your application has gone through a lot of checks and reviews by the time you get that interview invite. The medical school already knows that you're amazing or else you wouldn't have gotten the interview. They've read your application. They've seen all the amazing things that you've achieved. They've invited you. Interview spots are a limited commodity in this process. Right, they're the the rare the rare metal uh, of Earth. They're not just handing out interview spots to be generous to go. Oh, look! I feel sorry for you. I'm gonna invite you for an interview, but we're really not going to accept you. Right? That's very rare. I know of maybe maybe two schools. I know one for sure that does. They they offer interviews to all in-state applicants, but that's because they don't get a lot of in-state applicants. And so they want to try to help out all of their in-state people as much as possible. Um, and so that, but it's, it's not normal, right? It's not the norm. If you get an interview, it means this school likes you. They, they, they think that you potentially have what it takes to be accepted. So hopefully I've made my, my point here, right? You don't need to sell yourself. And in fact, if you do sell yourself, it's actually hurting you, I think. So what do you focus on instead of selling yourself? Well, first, the question is, what should you, before, before we can talk about what you should be doing, we should ask, what is the purpose of the medical school interview? Why do med schools even do interviews at all? Do you know? Which school sends invites to all applicants? Um, I believe it was Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. Don't quote me on that. But I'm, I believe it was Alabama. Let's see if you're a good fit to get to know you personally. Yep. So some personality. Definitely. Right? What else? Right? I can tell you the interview is not about these things. It's not about grilling you, interrogating you, any of these things. What I think it's about, and again, talking to lots of deans and directors of admissions, what I think the medical school interview about is these things. These are the things that they can't tell very easily from your application. So uh, they, they want to get you in person and get a feel for these things. So that's if if that's the purpose of the interview, what should you be focusing on instead of selling yourself? Well, let's let's jump to another analogy. It's it's time for another analogy with Dr. Gray. The med school interview I like to talk about a lot is like a coffee shop conversation with a friend, with a colleague. I like this analogy because really you want your medical school interview to be a conversation and not an interview. And yes, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes the, the interviewer doesn't let it be a conversation. Sometimes they're told not to let it be a conversation. Sometimes they're just testing you. Or sometimes they just really had a bad day and they're grumpy and they don't really want to be there and that's okay too, right? A conversation lets you build an actual connection with your interviewer as a real human being. It lets you show who you really are and it builds that trust that you want to have so that they can be your advocate. Focus on connecting as a human being and not as an interviewee to an interviewer. Does that make sense? If you focus on that connection as human to human, 
and not you are the interviewer and I need to sell you everything possible, it takes on a completely different vibe. So tell me about yourself, right? It's one of the, the clearest places where you have an opportunity to connect rather than sell yourself in the interview. We, we heard earlier, Natalie really struggled with this question before we, we started working together. So when the interviewer says, tell me about yourself, that's, that's your uh, invitation to take the conversation wherever you want it to go. But most students start selling themselves right away. Don't just list off medical and academic interests. Instead, be personal, right? If you were going on a date for the first time, you you, you both swiped right or left or whatever it is uh, on, on Bumble or whatever JDate or whatever app you guys are using these days. Um, uh, when you go in and have that first initial conversation with that person, uh, you don't be like, well, actually, I'm a hardworking, motivated, whatever, whatever, right? You, you talk personal. Here's where I'm from and here's what I'm passionate about. Right? Talk about those things. Same thing. Here's the goal. You you talk long enough to answer the question. You talk long enough to to potentially throw out a few things about yourself that the interviewer can then go, oh, that's cool. I am passionate about that as well. Right? Right. If if you talk about having a dog and they go, oh my gosh, I have a dog too. What breed is yours? Is it a golden or a lab? I can't really tell the difference. <laughs> I grew up uh, in that area too, right? Depending on on where you're where where you're from. So throwing out some of that information allows that connection. So instead of being interviewed, you're having a conversation about football teams or being a mom or Pomeranians. You'll you'll be so surprised how this approach changes the tone of the whole interview. All right, water break. Um, so I have uh, another a screenshot here, right? The student sent me uh, this screenshot or this, this note here. Uh, about just the whole tone of the conversation that was set up, right? Talking about being a Boy Scout leader and and just how it set the whole tone of the conversation. Another student here finding common interests with uh, the interviewers in three different interviews, right? It's amazing. Uh, your advice to be a normal person and have a conversation like a first date, pure gold. Like that at the bottom. It's amazing. <laughs> I haven't read that. Uh, in a little while. And uh, yeah, apparently I say the same things because I just mentioned, right? That first date kind of thing. This student followed my advice and then commented this in our, our pre-med hangout group on Facebook. My grades were never brought up in any of our interviews, any of my interviews, not once. Instead, my interviewers wanted to talk about my powerlifting competitions, my dogs, and why I thought some students dropped out of med school, right? This student was super concerned about uh, her grades. and she she crushed it because the school, the interviewers weren't concerned about that. She was invited for the interview. So the key to a good interview is connecting with the interviewer. Shocker, connecting with people is what makes life better. Who would have thunk it? So secret number three, how to use mock interviews the right way. All right, first of all, mock interviews are key, right? Um, you have to, why am I frozen again? Doo -doo. Pew, pew. <laughs> he, he, you should be doing mock interviews, even though a lot of students go about them the wrong way, right? So yes, use them and use them the right way. Um, oh, that's what happened. That's weird. Anyway, uh, so another analogy time. Think of, a mock interview, like you're doing an MCAT practice test, right? Taking the MCAT isn't just about knowing all of the content and it's not just about individual practice questions either. You have to take realistic timed MCAT practice tests so you get comfortable with the whole experience and you need to do the same thing with mock interviews. You can't just 
read my book on the interview process and, and just think about answers. You actually have to sit there with someone staring at you, expecting an answer. And then you you have to be able to, to think that you did terribly with one answer and move on to the next question and go, uh-oh, I need to move on. I need to forget about what I just said. I need to not worry about if that was right or wrong or whatever. Right, But that doesn't mean you should memorize all of your answers, which a lot of students try to do. <clears throat> so let's go back to this coffee shop conversation. I don't know. I don't know how many of you, like I look at this picture uh, and I go, oh, nobody with masks on. Oh, no, <laughs> we're all going to get COVID. Oh, man, these, these uh, pre-COVID pictures are bring, bring a little anxiety to the conversation. Um, so, so how do you prepare for a, a coffee shop? conversation, right? You go and meet a friend at a coffee shop. Do you stand outside the door nervous, anxious? Like, what are they going to ask me? Are they going to ask me how my night was last night uh, on that first date that I had? Are they going to, what should I, how should I answer that? And what if they follow up with this other thing? And and what if they do that, right? You don't, you don't memorize exact answers to every possible question your friend's going to ask you. You don't practice using a specific framework for everything you're going to say or how to respond to everything they're going to ask, right? You don't do that with your friends, right? Those approaches are rigid. They're over-rehearsed for a conversation. You wouldn't do it. You'd be very, very strange if you did it that way. So rule number one of interview prep, don't over-prepare. Don't script out everything word for word and memorize it. If you try to memorize exact answers, you'll trip over yourself. I love making people uh, uncomfortable if I feel like they're just rehearsing uh, or um, reciting a- an exact answer to me, right? Something they've practiced a hundred times, it's memorized. I'll stop them for fun. I'll like interrupt them to see what they do. Right? You'll, you'll miss the opportunity to follow tangents with your interviewer and make it a real two-way conversation and connection. You'll sound rehearsed. It's very, very easy to, to know when someone is way over-prepared. So what's the right way to use mock interviews? Well, here's what you should really be getting from your mock interviews. You should be trying things out. You should be getting comfortable with the experience. You should practice speaking off the cuff about topics you didn't prepare for. The key to mock interviews and the interview process is being comfortable with any potential question that can be asked. That is very different than what a lot of you try to do by preparing for every potential question. It's a very different change of language there. Any question versus every question. You have to be comfortable knowing that your brain is powerful enough to handle anything. The other big thing, right? You need feedback. Hopefully you're doing interviews with advisors or mentors, people who know the med school interview process specifically, not just general interviewing like business interviewing. It's a very different process. You should record yourself so you can watch yourself. you need to focus on getting comfortable with this process, trying things out, seeing how they work and don't memorize exact scripts, right? You're using mock interviews to get comfortable with the whole situation, not to script out your answers. Your brain is powerful enough to understand how to answer anything that comes your way. How do you prepare to answer any question versus every question? That's the the, the whole thing. Hadley, uh, something I talk about all the time is the the crazy um, Thanksgiving dinner with crazy Uncle Johnny, right? Everyone has a crazy relative that just brings up the most obscure conversations at the dinner table over Thanksgiving, over Christmas, over Hanukkah, whatever, right? And you are sitting there. Think, think about this, right? You are sitting at that conversation or you're sitting at the first club meeting for a new club that you've never been to before. When someone approaches you at 
crazy Uncle Johnny's dinner or in a club environment or whatever, wherever you are at, if someone approaches you and asks you a question, one that you're like, huh, I've never thought about that before. What do you do in that moment? You think about it. And then you talk about it. Because your brain can do that kind of thing. Right? Every single conversation that you have every single day is preparation for a medical school interview because you don't know what that person talking to you is going to say, what they're going to ask, how they're going to react. You are having a human to human interaction and you are off the cuff talking and thinking and processing and interpreting. That's what I mean by any question that could come your way. Anything that comes your way, you can go, hmm, let me think about this. Yes, this is nothing like other job interviews. And that's the, the big key differentiator. The difference is when you prepare for every potential question you think you're going to get, you go and read my 600 questions in my interview book and you go, okay, I need an answer for that. 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 And you go and you, you prepare all of your answers. And then you get into your interview and be like, I got this. I prepared all of the answers. And then you get a question that you didn't prepare. And what do you do? You get flustered. You freak out. You're like, oh, I didn't prepare for that. I wasn't expecting that. You weren't supposed to ask me that. When in reality, you should go, huh. That's a cool one. Let's talk about it. That's the difference. Okay. Does that make sense? So let's practice. Um, let me <clears throat> uh Hadley, I'm assuming you want to come on to practice. Say yes, or I'll lower your hand. Let me know. Unless you just had a question, Hadley, you practiced last night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring on uh, uh, someone else. Bring on some some new people because um, you got to practice last night. Um, all right, Aisha, I'm promoting you to panelists. That will allow you to come on with me, hopefully. Unmute, camera on if you can. <clears throat> and yes, Geraldine, Hi. there will be Q and A. Hello, Aisha. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, so, tell me about yourself. Okay. So my name is Aisha. I have three other siblings. I'm the second oldest. I have one other sister and two brothers. I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Um, I did spend five years in Pakistan in a, a rural village area. So um, that's a big portion of where I spent most of my life. And then I came back for high school here and I completed my undergrad here. Other than that, I am also a mother. Um, things that I like to enjoy doing is bicycling, reading books. Um, I love baking character cakes. And other hobbies that I do have is um, I like sewing. Okay. How do you think you did? I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. How do you think you did? Yeah, tell me. Okay. Um, I think I could have improved. In what area? Um, maybe trying to add more things to my answer or maybe um, expanding on something like what, what was about Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, how that experience was. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the expansion idea, I think, I, I think you had lots of stuff, um, but expanding just a little bit to help me understand, right. You mentioned character cakes. What, what kind of characters, right? What's your favorite character to make? Uh, why do you make character cakes? Do you sell character cakes? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're like, oh, I, I like to make character cakes. My favorite character cake that I've made is chase from Paw Patrol. Right. And then I go, oh, I have a four year old. I love Chase and I love Paw Patrol and whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or, or you could say you like sewing. Well, what's your favorite thing to sew? Like, do you do you sew shirts or hats or gloves or whatever? Right. So being able to to just throw off a little bit of extra tidbit of information that will allow me to go, 
oh yeah. And I have more connection with that now. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's bring on a few more people. Let me figure out how to, I can never see. Good to do. Oh, where'd you go? Do, do, do. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Gotta come over here, come over here, and there we go. All right. Then we go back to the participant list and we'll bring on Jasper. Hello, Jasper, as he joins. <clears throat> so you see what, what Hello, people are, are putting. Hey, Jasper, you see what people are putting in the comments there, right? I wanted to know more about the cakes. I wanted to know more about this. I wanted to know that, and that's where you got them, right? You hooked them with that little piece of information. All right, Jasper, tell me about yourself. Absolutely. <clears throat> I grew up on the Western slope of Colorado in a small town, uh, pretty agricultural, but surrounded by mountains. And so this has kind of come into play a lot with who I am today. Um, I've spent a lot of time in the outdoors growing up. And so I've got a great connection with nature. I'm very passionate about being connected with the natural world around us and putting in effort to protect the climate and the world in general. And I also am a big fan of stuff like soccer, as that was a huge part of my town growing up, um, as well as just going outside, skiing, hiking, um, anything you can do to spend more time outdoors. That's a big passion for me. And so those are some of the key components of who I am and what I, what I enjoy doing. Okay. What do you think? I, th I think I've focused a little bit too much on the um, outdoors and just like, I don't know, I should have expanded a little bit more into some other other things. I uh, kind of rambled a little bit, uh, but overall I would say it's pretty good. Why do you, why do you think too much uh, with the outdoors? Um, I, I'm not sure how everyone can connect to my experience, especially if they work in different parts of the country. I'm not sure mm -hmm. everyone yeah. may have this same experience. So, so your job isn't to change who you are to try to fit and find a connection, right? Your mm -hmm. answer was authentic to who you are and what your experiences were. You can't mm -hmm. change that, right? So, so be careful with wanting to change that to try to find that connection. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, what did everyone else think? Um, I like the use of your hands when speaking. Yep. So hands can can either be distracting if you're a little too crazy, or uh, they can be normal, right? You just use your, use your hands when you're talking, uh, whether in person or or even on Zoom. Sounded really comfortable, confident. Um, I was concerned uh, when you started talking about the outdoors and climate stuff. I'm like, where are you going with this? It sounded mm. a little rehearsed right off the bat. You loosened up a little bit later on as you, as you went down. So um good good job thanks yep all right do, 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 do. let's keep rocking and a rolling um i want to make sure um pa 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 who Where are you? Karina, are you still here, Karina? You didn't raise your hand, and I want you to raise your hand. I want you to come practice. Karina, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, she's still here. Preston, hello. We're working. Go to the restroom. You don't have to be on video, but... Uh... <laughs> Come practice. Uh, Preston, Preston, donde? Turn on your video. Hello? 
Sorry, I'm actually on a computer that doesn't have a webcam. Oh, okay. Well, that's why I can't see you. I, I'm hiding non-video people. I'll uh, unhide. There we go. Um, Preston, tell me about yourself. Hey, uh, I'm Preston. I'm 29 years old. Uh, I've been working in EMS for about eight years. The past three years, I've been a paramedic. Um, I joined the military right out of high school because I actually ended up failing out of high school and then uh, went on to didn't really know what to do with myself. So I joined the army, became an explosive ordnance disposal technician, and that kind of straightened me out. But um, since then, I got involved in healthcare and I've been loving every minute of it. So I decided to go to CSU and get a major in microbiology. I'm still doing that right now and working in the lab. Uh, but mostly my passions are outside of you know school and medicine and all that would be hockey. I'm a huge hockey fan, go abs. <laughs> Um, and dogs. I'm actually going to pick up some foster dogs today. So I'm pretty excited about that. Cool. All right. What do you think about that? Uh, I was a little frazzled. <laughs> okay. Why were you frazzled? Um, I don't know. I kind of was caught off guard when you asked me to participate. Caught, <laughs> caught off guard. You raised your hand to come on and ask. You're like, what's he going to ask me? I don't know. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I figured there's so many people here. The chances of me getting selected were pretty slim. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I yeah. got you. I got you. I did. <laughs> um, all right. So <clears throat> let's see. Some stress came through. Thought it sounded good. So here's where uh, I, I loved your answer for one good reason so that we can talk about what not to do. Um, your answer was very much a timeline slash resume of your life. And it's a very common way that students answer this question, right? I have your application. I kind of know what your resume looks like. Mm -hmm. I would probably know that you've been in the military. I probably wouldn't have known that you failed out of high school. Um, so that's a, maybe an interesting tidbit. <clears throat> um, but the resume like that you're in school and what you're studying and your job and your, your EMT for the last however many years, but that stuff doesn't need to be there. I want to connect with you and not just hear what you're doing. Fair enough. That makes sense? Yeah. So when you start talking about hockey, I'm like, okay, dogs. Okay, great. Right. That's the fun stuff that I can connect with. Right. That makes sense. That, that's, that's what helps you, quote, unquote, stand out. Okay. Got it? Yep, I got it. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's do is Karina here. Yeah, let me see. Karina, Karina, Karina. Oh, she is. All right. We're going to bring Karina on. <clears throat> I, I love I love the support already. I love the support. Everyone rooting on Karina. This is why I love Application Academy, our, our group coaching, uh, because this is what happens. Hello, Karina. Hi. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. You're already rocking the white coat. You don't need, you don't need to go to med school. <laughs> yeah, I'm already basically there. <laughs> yes. Awesome. I love it. All right, Karina, tell me about yourself. All right. Hi, my name is Karina. So things about me. I was born in California, but raised here in Florida. Um, spent half of my years in Miami and half in Tampa Bay, Sarasota, Florida. Um, I have three brothers. I'm the only girl. My family is like a huge part of my life. I love my family so much. Um, and they're a big motivation of why I want to come and pursue medicine. Some things I love to do, hiking, fitness. I've always been a big art kid. I've always been into drawing and painting, especially with watercolors. And in high school, I even put on an art exhibit at Eckerd College. So that's a little bit about me. Very cool. How do you think you did? I think I did all right. I'd give myself maybe a seven out of 10. <laughs> okay. I love it. Using a scale. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what could have gone better? Mm, I would say maybe my delivery. Uh, that's probably what I would say. My delivery. Okay. Yeah. I think your delivery was great. Uh, relaxed, you. comfortable, that uh, California chillin' vibe. Um, <laughs> the uh, discussion about family great. Um, the things that you've done, you started talking about art and paint. You gave me one little detail about watercolor, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would love to know one extra detail. Like, what do you like to paint with watercolors? Do you like mm. to paint sceneries or people or whatever? So I would have loved that little bit of extra detail there. Uh, other than that, it was awesome. Thank you. Oh, that yeah. means so much. So I love it. Take that same vibe, take that same energy into your interview tomorrow and yeah. you'll be great. Yeah. Thank you. Where are you interviewing? Uh, Nova Southeastern. Okay. And a little tip for my pre med. MD I or got the DO school? MD. I applied nice. to both, but MD. Okay. Tip for my pre meds. I actually called them right before Christmas and they pushed my application through because of that call. Nice. Yeah. And I, they called me like yesterday to interview today, tomorrow. So <laughs> nice. And, and what did you say in that phone call? Because um, it's, it's not mm -hmm. usually recommended to go bother schools. So what did you say? I, well, they had emailed me prior telling me that they received my application. Mm -hmm. I got like a weird email about transcripts. So I said, Hey, I got an email about my transcripts. I just want to make sure that everything was received. Okay. I okay. applied to like the GO and MD school and they're like, yeah, we have everything for you. I'm like, okay, I'm really excited to hear back from you guys. Awesome. Um, keep me in your thoughts. Yeah. yeah. So, so it wasn't a cold call. You were calling in response to something. Yes. yes. I think that's a huge difference. So True. yeah, we, we, we don't want to tell everyone to go, go start calling every school. <laughs> They're gonna be like, Who told you to call us? Dr. Greg, darn him. They, they already <laughs> don't like me enough. All right. Good job. Yeah. Good luck tomorrow. Let us, let us know. Keep, keep me posted. Thank DM you. me on I Instagram will. or something. I want, I want to hear how you did. I, I will definitely. All right. Very cool. All right. Let's, uh, let's keep rocking here and then we'll get to some Q and A. Uh, my voice is holding out, which is good. I'm using, I'm using this microphone versus this microphone. So I don't have to talk as loud today. I think you guys can hear me. Okay. Um, uh, let me share my screen again. Awesome. All right. So let's keep rocking. So I just taught you hopefully more about the medical school interview than most pre-meds will ever know. Now you know that focusing on connecting and not selling yourself is key. You now know how to start things off right with a personal answer to tell me about yourself. And you know how to use mock interviews to get more comfortable and confident. You also saw quotes from pre-meds who have worked with me in the past and used my approach, had success. So my question, if you had access to all of the same guidance that those students had, do you think you could crush your medical school interview too? I think so. Do you feel like you can do this with the right help? I think so. Because you can. You definitely can. So here's another question. Are you feeling excited now about the medical school interview? Relieved, I think? Are any of you relieved that the, the medical school interview isn't as scary as maybe you thought it was? Hadley, Hadley and Haley coming through <laughs> the H, the H sisters. Um, so I would love to talk a minute about um, Application Academy and how I think a lot of you would benefit from it. And then we'll do uh, we'll do some some great, great Q&A for a while. So uh, Application Academy is a group coaching program. It's 100 percent group coaching. Although you may show up on a day where you're the only one <laughs> live in the office hours and hey, then it's quote unquote personal. Um, the Application Academy is to help tell your story in the personal statement, the applications, secondaries, and what we've been talking about today, the interview process. It's going to help you through the whole process. Um, a couple of quotes here from students who have gone through the, the Application Academy and, and have told us about um, some of their reactions and responses through the process, right? Uh, this person uh, talking about how the story humanized themselves in this process. Uh, this student here, I'm excited to share. I just received my first acceptance of the cycle as I sit here at work. Thanks to everyone for contributing to the Application Academy course, blah, 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 right? As a reapplicant, so thankful for Application Academy. Um, this group program really helped me be much more successful this time around. Rocking and a rolling. We cover everything you need to know about the personal statement. Um, uh, red flags and what you need to avoid and how to edit your personal statement, 
uh, lots of examples, all that good stuff. Um, a testimonial from someone who struggled in their interview about why medicine, which is what the personal statement's all about. And the interviewer stopped her, which is highly unusual, um, and said, hey, like, we read your personal statement. We loved your personal statement. Like, you, you know the answer to, to our question about why medicine. All right, the application itself, everything you need to know about the application, um, how to build a school list, the disadvantaged essay, uh, how to write your activity descriptions, how to build a school list, all that fun stuff, right? And then obviously, obviously, the most important part, the the interview process. So we'll, we cover all of the interview process. You'll get eight modules with, uh, I don't know how many total videos we will have. Um, uh, I'm recording them kind of as we speak. Uh, a lot of it's recorded now. Uh, we're starting next week, which is fun. Uh, Morgan here was an Academy TA, and she really loved the group format of, of the interview process like we did today. Um, you get to hear other people talk about their thoughts. Um, obviously, today we did Tell Me About Yourself. But when we go into more uh, tricky questions like moral ethical decisions, um, questions about the um, the healthcare system, stuff like that, uh, hearing other people and what their thoughts are, right? There's a lot of diversity of students. And so um, I know I was just talking to someone who signed up uh, for Application Academy who's from um, Iran. And being from Iran, he uh, he has a different perspective on things. And so he he'll be able during during a mock interview during during our mock interview office hours when I say hey like tell me about the the healthcare system over there versus here like you'll be able to hear some differences and go oh I didn't know that and I can add that to my answer now so there's a huge benefit to the group course course and Sarah's like heck yeah it's not it's fun not gonna lie also from Iran um, this is really for anyone. Uh, anyone going through the process, anyone can benefit from learning how to tell their story. So you're going to get uh, all of the modules. There's uh, going to be about eight. Uh, we may add more, but there's at least eight that that we um, are recording and and setting up now. Um, about yeah, about a thousand dollars of value. Um, you're going to get. This is the, the the fun part. This is where I spend most of my time these days in terms of working with students. Obviously, I'm doing lots of podcasts and videos um, and workshops like this, but my my time working with students is through academy office hours. And so you get to work with me, but more importantly, you get to work with all of these other amazing advisors. Uh, Rachel, obviously here on the call, <clears throat> but also Dr. Scott Wright and Courtney Lewis, the two advisors on the left there. Uh, they're former directors of admissions. They they, they were the directors of their admissions process at the medical schools they were at. So they know a thing or two about a thing or two, right? <laughs> um, it's like the, uh, is it State Farm commercials? Is that who it is? Um, or farmers? We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. That's them. <laughs> and and uh, Rachel, we need to make a note that we should make some uh, social media memes about that because uh, that is hilarious. Um we're going to do 10 hours a week, at least uh, most weeks, two sessions a day, all of them recorded. And each of the sessions are broken down so that like uh, Monday morning is personal statement seeds and Monday afternoon is interview prep and Tuesday morning is uh, secondary essays and Tuesday afternoon is working on activity descriptions. Every session, every every office hour session is a different topic. So you look at the topics for the week or for the month. Um, we'll have the schedule out and you go, okay, here's, here's what I'm focused on right now. So whether you start uh, next week or you start in two months because you want to focus on the MCAT uh, for the rest of this month and get your score back in February, and then you want to start with us in March, we'll have office hours and workshops, um, office hours specifically for where you're at in the process. And uh, we're working on getting some amazing TAs to help you through that process. We we charge a lot of money, right, for uh, for one-on-one -on -one advising. But remember, this is group coaching. One-on-one -on -one advising, we understand, is out of reach. The price is out of reach for the far majority of students out there. But we want to help lots of students. That's our goal to democratize this process. And so uh, we take the the price 
that we normally charge and we make it a lot less, right? So if you were to do 10 hours a week times 52 weeks, because Application Academy is a 52 week long access that you get, that's 520 hours roughly times two, uh, 480. That's a lot of money. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, we keep looking here. You'll get access to all of my books, uh, both PDFs, and uh, we'll ship them to you. So you'll have them uh, as well. Uh, I need to update this. I think we, we have closer to 500 or 600 ratings now on Amazon. Um, people like my books. They're good. You're good. So you're going to get all the books. Um, you're going to get woo -woo, um, all my books. You're going to get access to a private Facebook group where we interact and collaborate a bunch. Um, uh, you'll be able to interact with everyone, right? Paige here talking about really the group and feeling the support of going through the process together in a super collaborative way um, is huge. And then you'll also get access to some courses that I've done previously. I was testing out kind of this group format. I recorded those. You'll get access to those. So there'll be a lot more um, of older Ryan, but also a lot more examples and, and things that you can go off of as well. So you can continue learning from, from lots of other people as well. You get access to Mapped Pro, which is Mapped uh, uh, Plus the amazing chat advising that you get in Mapped Pro and our new My LORs feature, which is rolling out here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, yes, $480 an hour, Hadley, right? Because it's 240 for 30 minutes. So uh, equated per hour, it's close to $500. And it's a lot of money. And we have people, <laughs> yes, uh, it, exactly, Hadley. I didn't want to put two hundred forty nine thousand dollars. I was like, "That's ridiculous! I can't put that on there." So I just put it at five thousand. Anyway, uh, my LORs feature you'll you'll get as well, uh, which is awesome. Uh, that value is much more than ninety now, uh, because if you're replacing Interfolio, then the Interfolio costs probably double that now. Uh, and then if you want to sign up uh, here today and one of the first 20 people that sign up today, we're going to uh, send you a link to do a one-on-one -on -one mini mock interview with me. Uh, and so we'll we'll just go in and, and do three or four or five questions uh, or an MMI scenario uh, with me. You'll, you'll get that as well. So... Let's uh, let's talk about this, right? Seven thousand one hundred and forty-one dollars, if my math is correct. What would it be worth to you uh, if you got that email, that phone call from the medical school uh, of your dreams, right? Uh, what would that be worth to you if you had that email in your inbox, that phone call tomorrow? What would that be worth to you? So, seven thousand one hundred forty-one dollars. You're like Dr. Gray. Nobody ever pays that much money for stuff. Well, actually, they do. <laughs> Um, we sell one-on-one -on -one services for lots and lots of money. And yes, it is ridiculous. And I understand that. And yet people want one-on-one -on -one services. And so we do one-on-one -on -one services and we charge a lot of money for it. And charging a lot of money helps us be able to do things like Application Academy. One-on-one -on -one advising does not come with application. Oh, wait. One-on-one -on -one, one -on -one advising comes with Application Academy. Let me rephrase that. If you sign up for one-on-one -on -one advising, you get Application Academy as, as just kind of a bonus, right? But if you sign up for Application Academy, you don't get one-on-one -on -one advising unless you're one of the first 15 or 20 today to get a, 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 a short call with me. Um, Application Academy, it's not seven thousand dollars, right? It's it's uh, five ninety nine or four payments of one fifty. We we do have a, a discount going on for this workshop and for our application jumpstart uh, workshop that we're also doing uh, tonight that I'll I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, it's four ninety nine. If you go to applicationacademy.com right now and sign up, you can go sign up. For ninety nine, for fifty two weeks, right? <laughs> it's five hundred dollars. It's ten dollars a week, roughly. Um, and yeah, even even still, that's a lot of money. 
Um, and that's why we do a lot of free stuff for everyone as well to help help offset that, right? Um, I signed up on Tuesday. Does that count? No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, we start next week. The 15-day clock starts next week, next Monday. If you're not satisfied, we'll give you your money back. Uh, if we ship you out books, we'll we'll take that cost because that that's a, a physical cost for us. Um, but we'll we'll give you your money back. So sign up and you'll you get to rock and roll. So um, lots of people are concerned, right? Uh, since it was a lot of money, uh, it, it what seemed like a lot of money is a lot of money to a lot of people. Um, Ma here, four interviews or <laughs> eleven interviews, four acceptances. Glad she did it. Um, uh, Hallie here thought that everyone would be ahead of me, but they weren't. Everyone's in a similar boat, all, all swimming through this giant sea of application stuff together. Uh, Taylor here, right, was worried that she wouldn't get one-on-one -on -one attention, but it wasn't an issue at all. Every week was able to ask multiple questions, get individual help, right? This isn't technically one-on-one, -on -one, but there's still lots of personal interaction. Uh, and and this was when Taylor Taylor was going through it, when it was a very different process, we have a lot more office hours now. We have a lot more ability for you to interact with us. And so uh, things should be even more personal. We typically have 20 to 30 at the most people during our live sessions. And usually it was, it was closer to 10 to 20 um, in our, our live sessions. So over the course of an hour, there should be plenty of time for you to get some personal interaction and uh, exposure. Um, Hallie here. What would you say to someone thinking about signing up for application? Hallie, do it now. Right. I love Application Academy. Courtney Lewis, who I, I mentioned previously, she's a former director of admissions at Burrell College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, when she joined our team in August as an advisor, we uh, I, I've been friends with her for a little while. I, I met her at the uh, admissions conference, that admissions summit that I told you about earlier. Um, and so I texted her, I was like, Hey, we're, we're busy. We need another advisor. Do you know anyone? And she's like, well, what about me? And so we talked and we ended up hiring her and we exposed her to application Academy. She's like, this application Academy is amazing. You give them all of this information and it's only $500. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so students love it. Our new advisors love it, right? If you're unsure or confused about the application process, join Application Academy. It took a very complex and long process and broke it down into bite-sized manageable pieces. I think that's probably what we're good at doing the best. So here again is what you're getting. Uh, all of this fun stuff for $4.99 right now. So who's ready to join? Go sign up. Let's do some Q&A. Uh, Q&A can be about anything. If you have questions about Application Academy, definitely ask. If you have questions about the interview process, definitely ask. If you have questions about anything else, about anything, uh, definitely ask. Febronia. Febronia? Yep, you got it. Hello. Hi. Oh my gosh, this is so weird. I watched so many of your videos. <laughs> you live. <laughs> the YouTube is talking to me. <laughs> yeah, What's so up? A quick question about the tell me about yourself. So yeah. um, is it okay to talk about, so I understand you're supposed to like tell about yourself and the other aspects besides medicine, but is it, but is it okay to say kind of, the events that led you into wanting to do medicine or the yeah specific, right? yeah so so if you read my book the personal statement book or maybe older videos or podcast episodes that are out there mm -hmm. uh i talk about that i talk about kind of weaving in why medicine to the tell me about yourself question okay when i update my book i will remove that because for, for two things. Number one, they're going to ask you, why do you want to be a doctor? Mm -hmm. Right. But number two, most students were really bad at weaving those two together. And so I'm like, let's just stop trying. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's not complicate the issue. Um, and so you, you can, 
-hmm. I've seen it work really well, but that's usually the the exception. Uh, most students don't do great with it. And so answer why, uh, tell me about yourself. And then when they ask about why do you want to be a doctor, then answer that question. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. All right. Let's go to Marie. Oh my gosh. I hate Zoom. Uh, Marie, hello. Hi. What's up? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So um, I've been in application academy for the past, like ever since it started. <laughs> but <laughs> so I know all the good stuff that it can offer is so I've struggled with my MCAT and um, as of my personal statement, because I've done it like twice now. So like I have my personal statement. And um, so my main question is, I kind of wouldn't be able to um, start attending now just because I've like stopped everything so I can focus on my MCAT. Would it be too late if I um, signed up like later or should I sign up now and just give it time when I can? So you can, you can do both, right? You get mm -hmm. 52 weeks whenever you sign up. Um, okay. What has changed from the past mm -hmm. uh, because you've been part of application Academy from the past right. is um, and, and you don't, uh, because you've been a part of application Academy, we have a six month extension for a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. If you, okay. you want to do that. So, so that's something that we can, we can help you with there. Um, okay. But just in general, something that's changed from when you signed up originally mm -hmm. was the, the fact that um, we only allowed people to sign up for application Academy through like the end of January, maybe beginning of February, but with our new format, because mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of having office hours with different subjects kind of all of the time. Right. Uh, it will allow people that want to sign up in March or want to sign up in April after they've taken an MCAT, after they're, mm -hmm. they're confident that their score is good enough that they are going to apply mm -hmm. uh, to sign up then. So we'll allow signups throughout the year. Um, you may be a little bit more rushed. Uh, you not so specifically because you you have a lot of uh, things done, but other people right. who maybe don't have a personal statement ready to go uh, <laughs> may feel a little bit more rushed. rushed. Um, right. And so our advice always is start the process earlier so that mm -hmm. you don't feel rushed. Right. And if you if you get an MCAT score that you don't like, mm -hmm. then you can put your your membership on pause, your application academy membership on pause, uh. and. And then we'll we'll kind of start back up with you when you're ready to go. So uh, for okay. you specifically, just reach out to to our team at Medical School HQ mm -hmm. uh, .net account and just mm -hmm. ask about the kind of that six month extension when you're ready. Okay. Um, and we'll we'll get you hooked up there. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So it's either Ogeny or Ogeny. It's Ogeny. Just Ogeny. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm just, oh, darn it. Oh, the, J, oh. the J is like a, a Z-H pronunciation. Oh. That's the best way I've found to explain it. Yeah. Ogeny. Ogeny. There you go. That's perfect. Ogeny. Yeah, that Z-H really helps. Okay. Ogeny, how are you? I'm excellent. How are you? Wonderful. So I have two questions, if, if okay. that's okay. Yeah. So my first question is, I have started compiling, um, you know, kind of a bank of situations and experiences that could be useful in answering like questions, like examples of, um, you know, times that I, you know, dealt with this or dealt with this or meaningful patient encounters, stuff like that. And not necessarily in like a scripted way, just to kind of have in the back of my mind to use with, you know, in, in, in helping to answer questions. Is that something yep. you recommend? Thousand percent. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Um, and then how many questions do you like when they ask you, you know, do you have any questions for us? Um, one question that I'm pretty confident in is, uh, so I have an interview in a couple of weeks at Burrell and um, my, the question I want to ask is what, how they believe the best way for a new medical student 
um, to integrate themselves into Borella's like upon matriculation. Um, what do you think about that question? Also, do you, should I ask more than one question or is it typically just one and done? Uh, I tell students to have three or four questions ready to go just in case. Um, that question is interesting, uh, but I'll, I'll warn against it for one specific reason. You don't know who's interviewing you. I mean, you may, you may know them, right? They may say, hey, Dr. Professor Smith, whoever is, is interviewing you. But you may not know, and it may change on, on the interview day. Uh, you don't know specifically what their association is with the medical school, with the student population, with the curriculum, with whatever the question you may want to ask is. And so that question to me borders a little bit on a little bit too specific in terms of knowledge that the interviewer will have to have. Got it. Right. And that's where I, I, I warn students, I caution students to not get super specific with questions so that the interviewer goes, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know what that so is. Just kind of more, more general. Yeah. So my, my general stance is opinion-based questions because everyone has an opinion and it, it kind of feeds into the ask questions where they talk about themselves because everyone likes to talk about themselves. Right. Um, and so uh, their opinions on things is, is kind of talking about themselves. So my favorite question to ask is what is something you love about this school that most people don't know about? Got it. That's a great one. Right. Super simple question that m almost everyone can be able to answer. Got it. Well, thank you so much. I That was very helpful. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Uh, Chayton. Chayton? Like Clayton? Chayton? Is it like Clayton with a C-H. Yeah, Chayton. Yep, Chayton. It's actually Native American. It means falcon. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you for having me on. Um, yeah. So my question is pointed towards the uh, the personal statement. Okay. So I just transi transitioned out of the Marine Corps for 12 years, and I want to transition into the Navy um, through either USIS or HPSP, okay. but I want to practice psychiatry. So my question for you is, is it, um, should I say that in the personal statement? Is that too forward to say, hey, this is exactly what I want to practice? Is that going to be a turnoff for medical schools? So our general recommendation is the personal statement is about why you want to be a physician, not about what type of physician you want to be. Medical schools okay. want to make sure that you're coming in with an open mind and that you're going to be a willing participant in all of the rotations that you're going to go on and not go into your ortho rotation or surgery rotation and go, this is stupid. I want to be a psychiatrist, right? So, so yes, uh, we typically caution students against that. Now, obviously, if you are interested in psychiatry, you probably have some experiences that are going to point down this path of like, oh, Chayton is really interested in psychiatry. And I can read into that and go, you're probably wanting to be a psychiatrist. But the personal statement doesn't have to say, I want to be a psychiatrist. And and our philosophy, again, is that it shouldn't say that. Okay. Okay. And that's even though, so I guess the reason why I'm asking is that the, the reason for the transition from, so I have a finance background, the transition from finance for so long, um, to me, it looks kind of weird without saying, hey, these factors have uh, influenced me and it's factors with you know, individuals who friends who I know mental health issues. Correct. Um, and, and so that, that discussion is around helping them in some sort of medical way without specifically coming out and saying, this has made me want to be a psychiatrist, right? Okay. Because you can, you can help people in, in whatever way. And yes, again, and that's why I mentioned some of your experiences are going to make it very obvious that psychiatry is a big influence for you 
without you saying, I want to be a psychiatrist, right? You want to now go explore how you can help these people. Absolutely. Okay. Makes right. sense. And so Makes one sense. one other thing that I'll that I want to not necessarily caution you on, but I, I want you to be super uh, aware of it, whether you go down the HPSP route or the, the USIS route, is what do the psychiatry um, needs look like for the Navy, Army, whoever, right? So if you're like, I want to be a psychiatrist, very similar to me, I went into med school wanting to be an orthopod. I came out of med school wanting to be an orthopod. And the Air Force was like, yeah, no, we don't need you as an orthopod because they only took, I think, five people a year then uh, when I applied. Just make sure that if you are dead set on being a psychiatrist or you're 99% sure you want to be a psychiatrist, um, that there's going to be ample-ish enough opportunity for you if you go down the military route again for medical school that you can come out and they actually take psychiatrists. Right. What what do those numbers look like? And you can look at the joint medical board um lists that are released. Uh they're they're I don't think they're technically public, but you can usually find them if you're good at Googling things. Um and see like how many psychiatrists did the Navy take. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Thank All you right. for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. All right. So let's keep rocking. Myrna. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> this is so cool. I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, you're not. <laughs> you're some, some dude hanging out in my basement. <laughs> What's going on? It's so very cool. <laughs> um, I guess my question is like a little bit both about the tell me about yourself question and the personal statement. Okay. Um, I was born and raised in Syria and like I experienced a lot of like things there especially during the war and stuff yeah so I want to be able to bring that up not for sympathy but for like this is the kind of perspective I have because of that experience but I just don't I don't know how I feel like I don't have a sweet spot where I don't overshare but also like yep. under yep. share I guess Got it. or both so so this is where what is your agenda right this is where that agenda mm -hmm. part comes up what is your goal with sharing about being from Syria, maybe you're a Syrian refugee. I've worked, I've talked to a lot of Syrian refugees who've gone through this process a bunch. Um, and I can connect you with some if you don't know anyone. Um, what is your goal of bringing that up? And more specifically, where are you bringing it up? I think that's your potential question or concern right away is like, where am I going to bring this up? I want to bring it up. That's my agenda. Yeah. But where do I bring it up? And that's where I'll caution you, right? Of, of the whole dance analogy is they're leading your following specifically for the interview. If they mm -hmm. ask you a question and you're like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity to talk about being from Syria and blah, blah, blah. If it truly answers the question, awesome. Go for it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't really answer the question, but you you just need to get it in there, that's the the selling yourself part. Yeah. Okay. If you're if you're doing it because you think it's going to make you different or stand out, or in your own words, right, have that different perspective. That's where I caution students of of now you're yeah. bordering on the selling and and pushing your agenda. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I just have to practice that a lot because I don't know what parts of it that I even want to like talk about. I just know that I mean that basically has everything to do with why I want to do this. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's perfectly fine. I, I want all of you to be able to lean on your personal experiences to help answer questions. What I don't mm -hmm. want you to do is push a, a narrative or your agenda where it's not being asked. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck. All right, Mina. Hi, Dr. Gray. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What's going on? So one of my questions is more um, about the questions you could potentially ask. So for a lot of jobs that I've, I'm, I'm in medical device sales, and for some reason, people have always suggested to ask 
the person who's interviewing you, like, is there any reason why you would hesitate to kind of like push me forward or um, anything like that? What do you think about that question when it comes to interviews? Um, and then, no, right? I yeah, know no. that's what I was thinking don't. too, but somebody, <laughs> some, someone suggested that for interviews. I'm like, oh, no. it's not a job, but. No, don't, don't put people on the spot. And then my other one on tell me about yourself, it's okay to say that like, I'm very grateful to be here with this, with this opportunity to get to know you in the school. It's, it's what fine. Do you think about it's, that? it's generic and cliche and everyone does it. It's fine if, if you want to use that to kind of get talking. Okay. Um, and then for the question, cause I'm interviewing for a DO school in a couple of weeks and I'm, I have, I've already written, obviously, in the secondaries why I like the DO path, but mm -hmm. is reiterating the same thing okay? So, good question. For any question that comes up in your interview, answer the question to the best of your ability. Don't answer the question so that you avoid something you've already written about. Okay. Right? What I see all the time are students who don't answer the question to the best of their ability. They think, oh, I already talked about this other thing in my essay. And so I guess I'll talk about this, this other, other, other thing. And it's not the best answer. And especially if I know you, if we've been working together for a while and I'm interviewing you and I know what your answer should be. And you're like talking about this other thing. I'm like, like, why did you not talk about this? And they're like, well, I wrote about it already. I'm like, yeah, but that was the best answer for this question. So don't worry about what you've written about unless they specifically say, I've read this essay. I don't want to know any more about this. Tell me something else. Okay. And then one last question I have is obviously, you know, you said, the school that I'm applying to happens to be like an hour from my house. Okay. So I'm, I'm debating between sending a thank you e email or just like handwriting and dropping them off at the office. at like the admissions office. Um, it's local. Yeah. So I would ask on your interview day, assuming you have that opportunity, a lot of admissions committees and, and offices don't want uh, physical mail because they don't really have anything to do with it. Oh, okay. So I would just ask them, do you guys prefer an uh, email or a handwritten note? Yeah, you can ask that. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Gray. Thank you for all your information. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Haley. Hi, thank you for having me on. Haley or Hallie? Haley. Haley. All right, I got it right. <laughs> So um, this is just like a question about letter of recommendations because I haven't even taken my MCAT yet. Yep. Um, I'm actually taking it on Friday the 13th of this month, <laughs> which is very important. <laughs> but um, since I'm you're, kind of- You're taking it on, on Friday the 13th and you're going to get a 513. Yes, that's what we're aiming for. <laughs> would, would you be happy with that score? I would be very happy with that score, honestly. <laughs> All right, 513 on 113. There we go. Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, so I've already graduated from undergrad. So my timeline's like just a little bit different, I feel like. Um, right. So for letters of recommendations, so if I'm planning on like applying as soon as applications open, when yep. should I be asking for a letter of recommendation? <clears throat> yeah, so you should use my LORs, our, our new LOR service. Um, okay. You start, you start asking now. Um, you, you can start asking now. So <clears throat> the... There, there are two ways to do it, and this is one of the benefits of using a third-party letter of recommendation service is being able to start asking now. If you don't use a third-party service like MyLORs, you, you have the interviewers – or not the interviewers, the letter writers – upload directly to the application service. Okay. If you're applying to AMCAS and ACOMIS or AMCAS and TMDSAS, the letter writer has to upload it to both places separately. Okay. If you use a third-party service like MyLORs, they upload it once, and then we handle the sending it to everyone else. Um, okay. But but the the issue that 
it's, it's not an issue. It's just a restriction, um, a limitation of uploading directly to the application service is that you can only <clears throat> technically request, right? You, you can still talk to the letter writer before, but you can't technically request that letter. And that letter can't be uploaded to the application service until the application cycle opens up for that year, meaning okay. beginning of May. And so you're potentially causing an issue. And I don't know why the application services do this, but whatever, right? You're causing a potential issue of waiting until May to officially request a letter and uh, worrying that every other student is also starting to request letters, or maybe they're just got behind in the, the process of, of applications, or they just realize they need to ask letters. And so you're putting more pressure on the letter writer to do it in a very specific moment of time versus asking now, and then they have three months to upload it. Okay, gotcha. I was really wanting to use a third party anyway, so this is perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So my LORs is not technically available right now to everyone. Uh, we're beta testing it with a small group. It'll be available in the next uh, couple of weeks. So okay. stay tuned. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, I think we have time for one more. Sarah, hello. Hi, how are you? Wonderful. What's going on? Um, so I just have a question um, regarding interviews. So when they ask, let's say they ask about Roe v. Wade and you have no idea what it is, how do you go about that? How would you handle that in real life? I would just ask them to give me more information. Yeah, yeah that exactly. So, so that's what I want all of you to take away from this at the very least, right? This is real life. Treat it like real life. This is a human being in front of you, whether in person or in Zoom, uh, that is talking to you. And if this were real life, if you were in that coffee shop conversation and someone says, hey, have you seen this? And you're like, no, I haven't. What is that? Like, that's what you would do. Got it. Okay. And then I have another question. Um, I feel like when... I'm practicing interviewing and all that stuff. Um, I feel like sometimes I may come off as robotic. How do you go about fixing that and not being so robotic and mon <laughs> monotone, I guess? I don't yeah. know. You, you practice. Um, you practice by not practicing, right? And that's where the whole don't use scripts, don't try to memorize everything, just understand some bullet points that you want to use and and go through it and and just let it be authentic and on the fly in the moment got you okay thank you you are welcome all right my friends uh i invite you to come tonight um premedworkshop.com is our application jump start we are finishing up our series tonight but you can go sign up you'll get the replays for the the first four weeks uh week one we covered kind of am i ready to apply lots of questions around gpas and trends and mcat scores and all that stuff uh, extracurricular activities uh week two was talking about personal statements week three was talking about uh, personal statements and activities week three was talking about secondaries week four was two weeks ago, we took a, a week off for the holidays. Uh, week four was interview prep. Um, so very similar to what we did tonight with our uh, tell me about yourself question. We had a whole hour uh, plus on bringing students on and, and doing mock interviews. And then week five is tonight and it's an open Q&A. So if I didn't get to you um, today right now, come to application jumpstart week five tonight. We'll have uh, the whole crew there, or most of the crew there to answer questions to help make sure you have the, the best knowledge moving forward with your applications. That's tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Rachel, parting words of wisdom. You're muted. Parting words of wisdom. Unmute. <laughs> We'll let Rachel work through her tech issues before tonight. Uh, her parting word of wisdom is, listen to Ryan Gray. He knows everything, and he is awesome. <laughs> Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope uh, your nerves and stress around the medical school interview process is reduced um, to 
a certain level, right? A little baseline stress is okay. Um, have a wonderful day, and hopefully we'll see you tonight for some Q&A. And hopefully we'll see you in Application Academy when you're ready. Bye-bye, everyone.